All right, hello everyone. My name is Bianca Brooks and you are now watching Trading Photos. Today I have a very special guest. His name is Aaron Collins. Welcome to the show. How you doing? I yes. am spectacular. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. This is um, a historic moment right here. <laughs> All right. Tell me about your backstory. So originally you're from Chicago. Yeah, born and raised on the south side of Chicago. Um, it was in Chicago. I got bit by the filmmaking bug um, after seeing an episode of I'm not sure you remember an 80s show called The Night Rider. It was shot in Chicago. And just seeing my city being showcased on television in that manner, in a cinematic way, that, that, did, that did something to me. And that really got me into filmmaking. And I've always been somewhat of a creative person anyway. OK, good. OK, so after Chicago, you moved to Texas. Yeah. I lived in Dallas for 15 years. Um, I went to film school there and continued my filmmaking exploits. And it was during that time when the thought of moving to LA came in my head of me. And what, Los Angeles is all, I've always had a love for the city. Um, from sight unseen, of course. And the first time I visited LA was back in, say, the mid 2000s, maybe 2012. First time I visited and just seen this iconic city, just, I mean, going to places that I've always read about and seen on television and magazines, whatever, whether it be the Hollywood sign or the, the Walk of Fame, and the, 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 for me to actually be on these places, well, once again, that was, that was, that was um, it was just a different feel. I'm like, I'm part of something that um, I've seen millions of times on television and at the movies. I'm actually part of the movies, I guess. Nice. So what year did you move to Los Angeles? 2013. I came out here in, I believe, March or April of 2013. So technically it would be nine years since I've been out here. Wow, it's been nine years. <laughs> All right. Well, time flies. Yeah. All right, so you are a very big proponent when it comes to being an independent filmmaker. Please tell us about the importance of being an independent filmmaker. Yeah, most definitely. Independence, when you have independence, that means you have say-so in what you do. The studio system, not knocking it, but I like the, stu I like in the studio system to being like corporate. The corporate and then there's, there's the, small, the small man, the small business people, the homegrown people, which are, are like, you know, the homegrown businesses. That would be independent filmmaking. When, with technology being what it is, it is so easy to be independent. Now, I'm not saying that it, it's anything wrong to go on the studio route if that's what you choose to do. But basically, when you go with the studios, you, you really don't belong to you anymore. You have to do what they say. You, you have to do things how they want, want to be done, and you have to do it in a way that benefits and satisfies them. Whereas, with say, the independent route, you might have to do more work, but you still get a sense of satisfaction that this is your work. If you have to, if you can't find a producer or director, then produce and direct it yourself. It's basically the, it's ba the whole DIY approach, the, the filmmaking. So when you moved to Los Angeles, um, I'm sure that you noticed that, unfortunately, Los Angeles has a lot of homeless people. And you yourself, you had told me that you experienced homelessness. So how did this make you feel? Well, seeing that um, LA is, once again, glad you asked that. Because um, back to what I was saying about a lot of these historic locations and stuff I've seen, if you go down like certain, like, okay, Hollywood Boulevard, that's a major tourist attraction. A lot of people come from all over the world just to be on Hollywood Boulevard. But at the same time, if you go down Hollywood Boulevard, right on top of the, the same stars that people look at, you may see a, a, a homeless person's pallet um, on top of these same stars. And that got me to thinking, I'm like, wow, this is the only time I've seen literally the haves and have nots side by side with each other. You can see homeless people laying there sleeping, and right in the background, you see the, the famed Hollywood sign. So that tells you that even though people come here for 
the sand and the beaches and the movie stars, that's not what LA is completely about. That's, that's only a part of it. Then you get to see the real LA, the dark side, the underbelly that they choose to not show. But one thing about dirt, if you continue to push dirt under a rug, eventually it will move the rug out of the way because there's so much dirt under it. So it's like LA's being kind of forced to deal with itself. Well, that is something that I certainly do hope that you know, LA works on and you know, providing the people with the help that they need. Now, when it comes to your filmmaking, you definitely said you came out here for opportunities, which is good. So how is it different living in Los Angeles versus living in Texas? Well, out here, this is the mecca of it. This is um, where filmmaking got started. So there's more resources out here. Now, Texas and Atlanta and other places like that, these are called satellite locations, meaning that you got, it's like, a division of the main thing, and you may have some resources, but the resources are kind of limited. Whereas out here, you could literally throw a rock and, and, and hit at least maybe five or ten resources related to filmmaking here. So it's pretty saturated. Nice. All right. And do you attend any networking events? Uh, yeah, I, I have, um, and I'm trying to become part of more. I think I've been to so many of them. I think you can pretty much say I'm a networking machine. The thing is, is I need to put some connections with these networks and put some action behind them. Nice. All right, so tell us about the future. What do you look forward to when it comes to your career? Going full speed ahead and not letting nothing slow me down. One thing about, I can say this, that sometimes I get in my own way. and. I just need to do that and you know, throw caution in the wind and just go out there and you know, trust the Lord you know, who blessed me with this talent to begin with that it would get me through. I mean, it was already, he already blessed me to do this and, and he already said this is what, he knows this is what I want, so I just need to um, go and do it. Okay, make sure you don't give up because you're over here promoting independent films and the importance of us doing for self. So we definitely want to see the work come out of you. So are there any artists that you would like to work with? Wow, I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that question before. Um, there's so many people out there. Uh, wow, you know, I, I have to get back with you on that one. I don't know. It, it, it's it's probably some out there. I haven't really put in consideration who I really want to work with, though. Okay, well, if you figure out a name, let us know right now. This might, they might see this very interview and say, hey, I want to work with him, too. Okay, um, so, like, a lot of people like working with the big stars and stuff. But the thing that um, I get, um, I get hyped up about is like the small talent, like if I could watch a TV show and I see somebody who puts on, who, who did an, an awesome job, like the small people that, don't, that are hardly known, I'm like, I want to work with that person. Like for example, if, um, if, I, if I could use this, this name, um, there's a show on BET Plus, a matter of fact, it's a, it's a Tyler Perry show, it's called The Oval. There's um, a, a star on there that, a female star, who I think is really beautiful. Um, I, mean, I, I think, I don't know if I've seen her before, but I think I might have seen her before and didn't realize it was her. Her name is Natasha Ward. She played a character on there named Ellie. And she just has a, just a, a certain personality that um, I, I think it's just down, it's laid back down to earth. Good. And you know what's so interesting about you saying that? I always like to hear people talk about the importance of networking across, because people always want to network with these major celebrities. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But it's like, what about the person that you took your, your film classes with? What about networking with them? So I'm so happy that you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? And, and one thing here about in L.A., you got um, a few... Uh, acting schools, um, you got people that are, that are hungry. I think you, should, you give them a chance. I mean, that's what they're going to school for, so I'm like, well, okay. And let them know, well, 
No, this is um, uh, this is not being backed by a major studio, but you know, we put our work and effort in this. Maybe we can make some magic happen. All right. Well, I'm so happy that you stopped by the studio, and I'm so happy to have you on the show. I'm I'm, I'm glad you invited me to the show. I mean, we go way back. Um, uh, you're a legend. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's not, it's Akinelli. Maybe he could do some editing and edit himself in here. He's really the legend. It's really him. <laughs> well, we really appreciate you stopping by the studio and doing this interview with us. Can you tell the people where they can follow you on social media? Yes, um, you can follow me on YouTube at The Real Aaron Collins, as well as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'm getting back into TikTok as well, learning how to use that. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming. And reporting live from the Los Angeles Art District, make sure that you guys tune in for the next episode of Trading Photos and subscribe to the YouTube channel.